Greetings, Internet. Today we're talking about oversharing. For example, when the girl you just met starts talking about butt sex, you're like... You know, it's a big leap for you to be thinking I want to hear that. Just... The, the guy over there is looking at it it's funny. Could you... Stop! Please! Ah! Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I am naked, therefore this is most likely a naked truth, and on this particular occasion, this, this, this topic was selected by a gentleman by the name of James Wisdom, who I believe is an anthropologist and teaches anthropology in, in jolly, old, jolly old England, and he talked about the fact that he wrote a letter to a magazine or a comic of some kind that that in which he, he shared a lot about his romantic history. And by romantic, I'm, I'm using, uh, using romantic as a euphemism for sexual. So yes, there is a lot this person talked about in this letter that I would personally not really want to read because it's not something I would do for fun. But, I mean, I am a person who has, has kind of had the... The, the reputation of being someone you could say anything to because, I mean, look, I, I worked with the homeless for four years. They talked to me about how they were molested and, and how they were prostitutes and how they watched their parents murder people and so on and so forth. So I, I've, I've heard just about anything you could possibly think of. And I actually, uh, I was in, in grad school for a while, although it was a for-profit grad school that, well, no, it was, a, it was a non profit grad school, and I just felt that the program was so poor that, you know, I didn't feel I, I, would, I would be able to pass the bar, so I was going there as a, a psychologist, and we had another name for oversharing. It was uh, self-disclosure, and more, more correctly, self-disclosure is a thing where you need to have the right amount of it. It is perfectly fine, generally, to discuss with your clients in the mental health field struggles you've had throughout your own life. It is not perfectly fine, for example, to discuss your sexual experiences uh, with these people because it's just not, it's not something you would, want, you would want them to know. You know, it's just there are certain things that you, you would always say under self-disclosure you should never disclose, for example, how much money you make to these people, um, where you live to these people, your personal information that might lead them to find you, like what restaurants you frequent, you know, thing, things of that nature. And of course, this is very difficult for me because, you know, I run a blog. Uh, one of my many blogs is Richard Reviews Everything, where not only do I talk about the places that I eat. But some of these restaurants, there's only one of them. They're independently owned. And I will actually put down the address of this independently known restaurant uh, so that people can go find it because there's only one of them. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you have to do that. And, of course, you know, I have another blog where, where I, I, uh, I post my personal letters. You know, you'll see a lot of Letters that I've written to my friend Cassie, of course, because it's letters to Cassie and other folks. And many of my, um, my letters uh, where, where I'm looking for an agent or where I am applying for a job and all these things. So a lot of my life is really online. I'm very open about who I am. Nothing is, is really left uh, as a secret. But how much is too much? And again, it's like... Uh, you'll notice that, that I talked about in this beginning the, the woman who you've just met who starts sharing with you things that uh, are a little upsetting. And I mean, I remember there was a woman that I had just met in a class once, and she automatically shared that she cut herself, was a slut, and a, a number of other bizarre, just absolutely bizarre facts. And you're like, you know, maybe don't lead off with that, because that's not, that's not appealing to me. 
Uh, so again, yeah, how much do you share? How much do I share with the internet? Well, for example, unless it is appropriate, or that is a specific topic, one should generally not mention bodily functions. I mean, you know, I was sick. Yes, that's fine. Do you need to go out there and describe what sick means and what particularly came out of your mouth to mean that you were sick? No. No, you don't. Um, there are what's called, I know that these things exist, and I'm almost ashamed that I know, a log blog where somebody uh, either photographs or artistically renditions their stool, and then they show their stool to the world. And this generally, unless you're that kind of a person, like if I were to do that, YouTube would actually make this mature content, so that's not appropriate. Again, um, see, here's the problem of, I live in a family of oversharing. And I could tell you things that my old man told me when I was 10 years old that traumatized me. Because I just, I didn't want to hear them. It's like, you did what? Hey, dude, you're talking about my mother. I mean, you, you shouldn't be saying that, old man. You shouldn't be saying that. You know, it's sort of like, I remember in, in Human Sexuality, which was a psychology course, you know, the, the teacher comes out and says, it is not possible to masturbate too much. And I thought about that for a while, and I thought, really? Do the words, Dad, stop it, we have company over, mean anything to you? So, yeah. Certain topics need to be appropriate for the audience. And again, this is a person, he's an adult, posting on... I have not seen the website, but it's an adult website. It's a website about sexuality. And, you know, if this person were a human sexuality teacher in psychology, them saying, you know, many of these personal facts are completely normal, but it's like, as my, my human sexuality teacher explained, she said to the class there that one of the things that was not appropriate would be asking her about what she does with her husband, or how often she does it with her husband, because that's just something we should really not know. Asking her about a particular position, that's fine, uh, but we should not ask her if she's tried that with her current partner. Unless, you know, that's one of those things. I guess you could share that because she's a sexuality teacher. But that's the forum. And that being the forum, you can do those things. You know, you can do those things. So part of it is oversharing depends on where you are sharing and what you are sharing. Because this is YouTube, and YouTube basically wants a PG-13 rating, that's what they want, okay? If I wrote mental health in the, in the comments of this, it would most likely be flagged as not appropriate for um, monetization. And again, I'm, I'm probably not going to write nudity any longer because that would mean it's not appropriate for monetization. And I recently, I got an email saying that one of my um, videos with mental health in the title was removed from monetization because they felt that it was, you know, too graphic. And this was just me talking. It's exactly what you're seeing now. So, that's one of those things. I mean, you need to, one, most important, don't disclose information that may be dangerous to you. How much money you have, where you live, uh, who your significant other is, things like that should be kept to a minimum by nature. I have only when, when their spouse was a teacher have I had a teacher express, this is my spouse, in college. In high school, I had one person who definitely wanted me to meet his wife. I don't know why. But beyond that, that, that was always the boundary. Um, secondly, it's just things that are appropriate to the medium. You need to understand that if, if I were a lecturer standing in front of a college class, what I say to that college class is going to be really based on what the class is. If I'm talking about physics, my personal home life is probably not a good idea. If I'm talking about mental health, you know, I can't use the names of any of my clients. That's against the rules. 
and I can't, um, I can't disclose a lot of my own, my own medical issues. You know, I have to keep that non-personal. So that, that's a big thing. So yeah, I mean, it's really hard. It's always going to be very difficult to say what is and is not appropriate because the medium changes. And it's like, yes, one of this gentleman's college students could go and find this website and say, hey, is this you? Is this the same person who, who wrote this thing about, you know, their, their sexual history and whatever have you? And of course, I don't know if they could really identify it from the website, but he has a very distinctive name. So, yeah, probably very likely they could track it to him. And I mean, again, I guess the thing to do in, in that situation is, is ask yourself, will it jeopardize your job, James? Uh, will it jeopardize your job? Will saying this, will sharing this online jeopardize jeopardize your employment? That's that's one of the things I would have to point out there. Anyway, I hope this has shed some light on the situation. Again, I know it's a very sensitive topic. Um, so again, if any of you would like to ask me a question on the whole, the whole one person that is probably going to watch this, just write that question in the comments below. I will try to make a video about it. And, you know, just, uh, just live your life, be true to yourself, and try not to hurt other people.